So your friend asks you for a favor and gives you 5 bucks asking to buy something to eat, something to drink, something to feed his cow with, and something to plant in his garden. At the same time, you're allowed to buy just one thing. What are you going to buy? You can go and buy a watermelon. You can eat it, you can drink it, you can feed the cow with the rinds, and as for the watermelon seeds, you can easily plant them in the garden. An egg has to fall 100 feet, but you can't let it break. You can't slow down its fall or cushion its landing. How can you do it? Drop the egg from a height greater than 100 feet, and it won't break for the first 100 feet. <laughs> Cracks me up. Let's imagine you don't know what an elephant looks like. One day, you're going on a safari to watch animals with your friends. One of them points at a rhino and tells you it's an elephant. The other shows you a hippo and claims that it's an elephant. Who will you believe and why? The task was to imagine that you didn't know what an elephant looked like, not that you didn't know what a hippo and a rhino are. It means you won't believe either of your friends. It's fitness day at school, and all the children ran the same distance. Each kid was ranked according to his or her own unique result. Billy turned out to be both the 50th fastest and the 50th slowest runner. How many kids are there at Billy's school? Even though 100 sounds like a clear-cut answer, it's actually 99. Billy is the 50th in the sequence from 1 to 50 of the fastest runners. If he's the 50th slowest, there has to be 99 runners ranked from 50 to 99. Mrs. Smith went to the police claiming that her vintage necklace was missing. The woman was upset. When the police arrived, they saw no signs of a break-in. No messed up locks, no misplaced doors. Only one window was broken. There was a total mess inside the house and dirty footprints all over the floor. Surprisingly, the next day, Mrs. Smith was arrested for fraud. Why? The police were sure that Mrs. Smith lied to them because the window was broken from the inside. If it had been broken from the outside, little pieces of glass would have been on the room's floor. You've been captured and kept in jail for several months. One day, you manage to open your cell and get out into the hall. There are three exits. A huge, vicious-looking man guards one of them. The second has angry dogs. And in front of the third exit, there's a timer ticking down to an explosion in 5 minutes. Which exit will you choose? Wait until the explosion is over and get out through the third exit. Bill and Joe have had an argument about human body capabilities and made a deal. Bill would go to Antarctica and Joe would travel to the Sahara Desert where they'll both try to survive for three days without any shelter and clothes, but with plenty of food and water. Who has the better chances of survival? It's Joe. In Antarctica, the temperatures are freezing all the time, and without any cover, Bill would become an icicle in less than a day. In the Sahara, on the other hand, the extreme heat might cause blisters and even heat stroke, but only in the day. It's rather cool there at night, and water will help Joe fight any dehydration. James escaped from prison and ran for the countryside. Suddenly, on a small, deserted road, he saw a police car heading right at him. James ran toward the car for some time, then turned and rushed into the woods. Why did he run toward the car first?
James was in the middle of a bridge when he saw the car. He had to run toward the vehicle to get off the bridge. Newlyweds left for their honeymoon and asked their neighbor to look after their house. When they returned, the woman found out that she'd lost all her expensive jewelry because of a power outage. The woman had hidden her jewelry in a supposedly safe place. The house wasn't robbed. The neighbor was an honest person. The jewelry got lost on accident. What happened? The wife hid her jewelry in the freezer in a bag with frozen food. After the power failure, all the food spoiled. The kind-hearted neighbor decided to help and threw away all the bad food together with the jewelry. On a sunny, windless day, a ship was in the harbor. There were many people on the shore looking at the vessel. Suddenly, the ship started to sink fast. There was nothing wrong with it, there was no storm, and the skies were blue. And yet, the ship went down in front of the spectators. What happened? Nothing unexpected. The submarine's captain just ordered the crew to dive. You're playing ping pong when your last ball falls into a one-foot-deep narrow metal pipe embedded in the concrete floor. How can you get the ball out of the pipe if all you have is your paddle, a bottle of water, and your shoelaces? Pour the water from your bottle into the hole, and the ball will rise to the surface. Oh, and use your shoelaces to keep your shoes on. It took seven years to build the world's tallest skyscraper. Every year, the builders managed to double its height. How many years did it take the skyscraper to reach half its maximum height? Six years. If the constructors doubled the building's height every year, the skyscraper had to be half its final height a year before it was completed. There's a low railroad bridge in your town with a car tunnel under it. One day, you see a large truck sitting right in front of the tunnel and a confused driver walking around. You come up to him and ask what happened. It turned out that the truck is just a couple of inches taller than the allowed height. So, if he drives inside, the truck will get stuck. Unfortunately, that's the only way to the driver's destination. How can he get through the tunnel? He has to let the air out of the tires. It'll make the truck lower. Lucy could only use a public telephone to make calls. One day, the phone broke. She informed the phone company, but they did nothing. The next day, she came there again and said something. The day after that, the phone was fixed. What did Lucy say? She said that people were making calls without paying. A family lived in a round hut. There were five people a mother, a father, and their three sons. When the father came home one day, he discovered that his computer was broken. The mother was away. Mark, the oldest kid, said he was doing his homework. Jack, the middle kid, swore he was drawing. And Tom, the youngest, told father that mom had punished him and so he was standing in a corner. Who broke the computer? It was Tom, of course. A round house doesn't have any corners. There is a one-mile-long bridge, which can only hold 5,000 pounds at one time. That's exactly the weight of the truck that's crossing it. The truck reaches the middle of the bridge and stops. Suddenly, a bird lands on the truck. Is the bridge going to collapse?
The bridge isn't going to break down because the truck has already used some gas to get to the middle and therefore weighs less than 5,000 pounds. You agreed to take part in a reality show, but it turned out to be a trap from a crazed lunatic. He tells you to dive into one of four tanks. The first one is swarming with venomous snakes. The second is filled with corrosive acid. Electric eels are swimming in the third one. And the fourth tank is filled with bacteria-infested water. In which tank will you have more chances of survival? Choose the tank with the bacteria. First of all, not all bacteria are harmful. And secondly, not all of them are contagious. Good luck with that! Mark got himself a new book to read. The plot was so exciting that he couldn't stop and kept reading the story until late at night. He didn't turn on the lights when it was pitch dark and there was no one to do it for him. But he still managed to read the book till the end that night. How is that possible? Mark was blind and was reading a book written in Braille. Or he could have just had an ebook. Hey, why not? A businessman arrived at his office and found that some very important documents had disappeared from his desk. Police suspect three people Amy, Carla, and Mike. Each of them said, however, that they hadn't even been to the office. Who was lying? It was Mike. Both Amy and Carla are wearing high heels, while the dirty footprints on the floor were clearly left by sneakers. The king of a faraway kingdom was getting old and started to think of announcing his heir. He had three daughters, each with her own virtues, and the king couldn't decide which of them would be the best queen. Then one of his counselors suggested an idea. The king should give each of his daughters a teapot filled with water and the daughter whose pot started to boil first would be proclaimed the heiress. When the day of decision came, the three princesses started boiling water. Two of them really wanted to become the next queen, but in the end, the one that didn't want the throne won the competition. How did that happen? The two princesses who lost were a bit too eager. They constantly raised the lids of their pots to check if the water was boiling. And the third didn't care, so the water in her pot began boiling first. In the busiest street of a big city, there was a shoe cleaner who got lots of clients. He offered his services to everyone for free, but anybody who stopped and took his offer left him money before heading off again anyway. Why did they do that? He cleaned only one shoe for free, and if the client wanted their second shoe cleaned, they had to pay. Aaron was a poor teacher in a rural school. On the 13th of February, the day before St. Valentine's, he unexpectedly received a letter saying that his rich great-aunt had left him a huge inheritance. The next day, three of his colleagues, Sarah, Carrie, and Martha, sent him love letters. Can you tell who was genuinely in love with him and who was only pretending to take advantage of his newfound wealth? Carrie was the honest one. She's wearing a necklace with A and C engraved on it, which stands for Aaron and Carrie. Clearly, Aaron gave it to her as a gift because they'd been dating even before he got the inheritance. Jonathan spent several days in a hospital, although he never even entered the place through any doors. What's more, when he was released, he was perfectly healthy, but still had to be carried out of there. Why?
because Jonathan was a newborn baby. A village in the far north has found itself in big trouble. Someone has poisoned the lake, which was the only source of drinking water for the dwellers. When the police arrived to the place, all they saw was a set of weird prints on the snow. There were footprints between two parallel lines. They didn't know the name of the culprit, but they at least knew who they had to look for. Can you follow their logic? The police were looking for a person in a wheelchair and their helper. The wheels would leave those parallel lines, and the helper had to push the chair and would leave the footprints. Jack and his business partner decided to celebrate a very profitable contract they'd recently signed. They both loved hiking, so Jack suggested going to the Alps for a climbing trip. His partner gladly agreed, and Jack took it upon himself to arrange their little vacation. However, the trip went terribly wrong, and Jack's partner got lost in the mountains. Jack couldn't find him, and neither could the rescuers. But upon returning home, Jack was arrested after the police got a call from his travel agent. Why? The travel agent told the investigators that Jack only bought one return ticket for himself. For his partner, he bought a one-way ticket. Someone had broken into Mr. Jenkins' house and taken all his valuables while he was on vacation. His neighbor, Mr. Brown, called the police to tell them about it because he'd witnessed the event. He said he'd come back from work late and saw the lights were on in Mr. Jenkins' house. Mr. Brown knew his neighbor was away, so he carefully approached the window to look inside. The glass was frosted over, so he breathed on it to melt the ice and saw a man in a gray hoodie stuffing valuables into a blue backpack. Then Mr. Brown ran home and called the police. The officers listened to the story and immediately arrested Mr. Brown. Why? The dutiful neighbor had one detail wrong in his story. Windows become frosted over from inside. Then how could he have melted the frost with his breath from the outside? One rainy morning, Miss Riley left her house in a hurry and forgot some very important documents on her desk. She came back in an hour, but the document was gone. She gathered everyone who was in the house that day and questioned them. Ryan, the cook, said he'd been preparing dinner and didn't even set foot in Miss Riley's room. Sal, the janitor, said he'd only come in, turned on the lights to see if cleaning was needed, and left. Rose, the gardener, said she'd been busy watering the plants outside and didn't come into the house at all. Who took the document? It was a collective job. All of Miss Riley's employees were guilty. It was early in the day, so it would have made more sense for the cook to prepare lunch. For the same reason, the janitor wouldn't have needed to turn on the lights. And it was also raining, so the gardener wouldn't have to water the plants outside. There are four glasses on the table in front of you. Each of them is filled with water to the exact same level. And in each of them, there's an object. In the first glass, there's a baseball. In the second, a pencil eraser. In the third, a wristwatch. And in the fourth, a paperclip. Which of the glasses has more water than the rest? The fourth glass. If you take out the objects from their glasses, the water level will drop because they'll stop taking up the volume. The paperclip is the smallest object, so there's more water in that glass. Humanity is coming to its end. The last man on Earth is going about his day, working the field, gathering wood for the fire, making supplies for the winter. 
At the end of the day, he's getting ready for bed when he hears a knock on the door. He isn't scared and goes to open it. Who's standing behind the door? A woman. Mark's best friend, James, lives in another city, and his birthday is soon. So Mark decides to send him a present. James loves playing golf, and Mark buys him an expensive golf club. But there's a problem. The best postal service in his town only accepts packages no bigger than 3 feet to a side, and the club is 4 feet long. Still, Mark found a solution. What was it? Mark bought a square box with a side of 3 feet and put the club inside it diagonally. Jenny's sister goes to a private party to which Jenny wasn't invited. Envious, Jenny still decides to go but finds out there's a guard at the entrance who asks all visitors for a password. She hides around the corner and eavesdrops on the other guests. One couple approaches the guard and he says 11. They reply 9 and he lets them pass. The next visitor is a guy to whom the guard says 6. He answers with 4, and the guard lets him through. Certain that she gets the principal, Jenny comes out of the shadow. The guard looks at her and says, 110. Jenny replies, 108. But the guard doesn't let her through. What's the correct answer? The answer's 90. If you write 11 in Roman characters, it'll look like this, xi. 9 is its mirror image, ix. Same with 6 and 4. With 110, it's cx. And 90 is xc. A man came to the police, claiming that a very valuable briefcase was forcefully taken from him in the street. When an officer asked the man if he could describe the person who had done it, the man said he was wearing a full motorcycle outfit, leather pants, a thick leather jacket, and a helmet. The culprit tore the briefcase from the man's hands, hopped on his motorbike, and left. Still, the man noticed the criminal dropped something and picked it up. Turned out, it was his glasses. The man took them to the police as evidence. After a few more questions, the man was taken into custody for fraud. Why? If the culprit was wearing a helmet, then how could he have lost his glasses? A married couple were staying at a hotel. One night, they had an argument, and the man went out to cool off but forgot both his room key and his phone. When he returned, he saw an unconscious man lying on the floor next to his and his wife's room door. The police arrived and questioned them both. The wife told them she'd heard a knock on the door and thought it was her husband, so she opened it right away. Then the man pushed her, so she smacked him on the head with a candle holder and closed the door from inside. Still, the police took her into custody. Why? The woman thought it was her husband, but still approached the door with a candle holder in her hands. That means she wanted to hit him with it in the first place. Mmm, lights out! So Mia wanted to go to the party her classmate was throwing, but her father didn't let her. Mia thought for a while and remembered her grandparents had just moved to their new one-story country house. She asked her dad if she could visit them at the weekend, and the man agreed. But Mia went to the party instead. When she got back home after the weekend, her father asked her if she had had a good time. Mia replied she helped in the garden a little and spent the rest of the day upstairs. Her father immediately knew she was lying. How?
Mia said she'd been upstairs. But her grandparents' house is a one-story cottage. Liar, liar, pants on fire. 11 plus 3 equals 2. 10 plus 5 equals 3. Now how is that possible? It makes sense when we talk about time. 11 o'clock plus 3 hours is 2 o'clock. 10 o'clock plus 5 hours is 3 o'clock. One king wants to find out which of his three sons is the smartest. He takes three chests and puts his crown in one of them. On each chest, there's a statement. But only one of these statements is true. The crown is in this chest. The crown isn't in this chest. The crown isn't in chest number one. Each person can only open one chest. The son who figures out where the crown is will be the next king. But can you solve this riddle? If the first statement is true, the other two must be false. It's not so because the second statement turns out to be correct. Uh So this assumption's wrong. If the second statement is true, the crown isn't in the first chest. It's not in the second chest either. Then it must be in the third one. But this makes the third statement correct, Uh although it shouldn't be. If the third statement is true, the first one's wrong and there's no crown in the first chest. The second statement's also wrong. Now there are no contradictions. The crown's in the second chest. Here's a sequence of letters. Which letter should you add? The missing letter is F. If you put it at the end, you'll get E. James and Taylor were best friends in elementary school. Unfortunately, when the children were 10, James and his parents moved to another state. The friends lost contact. 15 years later, James and Taylor accidentally bumped into each other in a cafe. It was their first meeting since school. They recognized each other and started talking. It turned out Taylor was already married and had a daughter. Wow, said James, does she look like her dad? Oh no, Taylor said, the girl's a mini version of her mother. Ah, so she must be a blonde with blue eyes. This time, James was right. How did he understand that? Taylor's a girl, she's the mother and James only needed to describe her. You're outside a room with three switches in the off position. Your task is to find out which one turns on the light in the room. You can flip as many switches as you want, but you can walk into the room and check if the light's on only once. How can you understand which switch controls the light bulb? Turn on two random switches and wait for a couple of minutes. Then, turn one of them off and walk into the room. If the light's on, the switch connected to the bulb is the one you left in the on position. If the room's dark, touch the light bulb. If it's hot, then the controlling switch is the one you just turned off. If the light bulb is cold, the correct switch is the only one you haven't touched. Esme got lost in the forest. She was wandering around for the whole day. Finally, at dusk, she saw a spooky house. A witch lived there. The girl had nowhere else to go, so she entered the house and asked for help. The witch said if Esme solved her riddle, she'd be free to leave in the morning. Here's how the riddle went. 17J, 70M, 96A, 162J, 256S, 354, hmm, what's the missing letter? The 17th day of the year is in January. The 70th day of the year is in March. The 96th is in April. The 162nd in June. And the day 256 is in September. Day 354 is in December. The missing letter is D. 
A young girl got her first job as a maid in a rich lady's house. Once, when she was tidying up, she noticed a very expensive collection of books. She made a break to look through one of them and then returned it to the shelf. The girl kept working until the very evening. No one else was at home. After finishing her work, the maid returned to the shelf and discovered that the sixth book was missing. But she clearly remembered that the book had been there before. It was the one she had been looking through. When the lady returned, the girl confessed she lost the book. But the woman only laughed and said everything was fine. Nothing was missing. How come? The collection had eight books. The ninth book was actually the sixth one. The girl accidentally put it upside down. Right before Christmas, the police got information that a famous thief named Alfonso had left Chile. He boarded the plane to Los Angeles. The only thing the detectives knew about the man was that he had a beard. At the airport, the police officers met a group of people. They had just arrived from different countries. The detectives noticed four men with beards and interrogated them. The first one said he'd come from London. The second told the police he arrived from Chile, but his name was Cristiano. The third man answered he'd come from Sweden. And the fourth one was also from London. The police didn't even need to check their plane tickets to spot the criminal. How did they know? It's Christmas time, but the man who supposedly came from Sweden is dressed too lightly for that climate. He must have arrived from Chile, where it's summer. A road accident happened on a foggy day. Two drivers were taken to a hospital. Each of them had a concussion. Interestingly, their cars didn't even have a scratch. What happened? The drivers were going in opposite directions. It was foggy, so they stuck their heads out of the window. They didn't notice each other and hit their heads. Ow! Samantha was born on January 27th. For the first 20 years of her life, she celebrated her birthday in the winter. But starting with her 21st birthday, she began celebrating it in the summer. Why? She moved to the Southern Hemisphere, where it's summer in January. Two sisters, Ava and Nicole, are very honest girls. They always tell the truth, except for one day a year. On their birthdays, they always lie. Today is September 17th, and you ask them when their birthdays are. Ava says hers was yesterday, and Nicole says her birthday is tomorrow. The next day, you ask them again, and they say the exact same thing. Can you guess when their birthdays are? They can't have two birthdays. It means that one day, one of them lied, and the next day, it was the other's turn. Since Ava mentioned yesterday, her birthday must come first. So Ava's birthday is on September 17th, and Nicole's on September 18th. Bethany, Tommy, Eliza, and James spent the whole day at home alone. Their mother didn't let them enter her room. When she came back in the evening, she wanted to eat her chocolate bar. But it was gone. She went downstairs and asked the kids who had eaten her treat. Bethany said she'd been doing her algebra homework the whole day and hadn't eaten anything at all. Tommy replied he'd been playing football outside. Eliza said she didn't even know where their mom kept chocolate. And James simply claimed it hadn't been him. Their mom knew immediately who had taken her chocolate. How did she figure it out? It was Eliza. The mother never mentioned what kind of treat was missing. But Eliza somehow knew it was chocolate. The father of identical quadruplets... Aurora, Belle, Chloe, and Dana called the teacher and asked her to let Dana leave earlier. 
She had a doctor's appointment. The teacher couldn't tell the girls apart. To have some fun, the quadruplets refused to confess who was who, but gave their teacher a hint. Chloe is somewhere in the middle. Dana is to the left of Belle and to the right of Aurora. Aurora is right next to Dana. How can the teacher identify the girls? Chloe is somewhere in the middle, and since Dana has someone on both sides of her, she must be in the middle too. If Chloe was the second, Dana would be the third. Then Dana would be to the left of Belle, and Belle would be the fourth. Then Aurora must be the first. Uh But it doesn't work, because Aurora and Dana have to be next to each other. If we switch Chloe and Dana, Dana will be right next to Aurora, but still to Uh the left of Belle. So the right order is Aurora, Dana, Chloe, and Belle. Dana's the second girl. Jaden bought a beautiful ring for his girlfriend. He wanted to propose to her at the weekend. He left the ring on his desk at home and went to work. But when he got back in the evening, he didn't find the ring. Only his three sisters were at home that day, and all of them didn't like his girlfriend. He went to question each of them. Mia was in her room. She said she had spent the whole day there painting the walls. Emily was in the kitchen. She answered she had been cooking a birthday cake for her friend. And the youngest, Nora, was in the garden. She said she had been planting roses. It didn't take Jaden long to figure out who had taken the ring. Do you know who it was? It was Nora. She looks too tidy after spending the entire day in the garden. Plus, she doesn't have any garden tools. Carter's literally running home from school. He has a piece of cake waiting for him there. But as soon as the boy opens the fridge, he realizes someone's eaten his cake. It can only be his elder sister, Maya. He sees her leaving the bathroom. How could you? I've been dreaming about this cake for the whole day. What are you talking about? I came home half an hour ago. I immediately got in the shower and just finished. Carter isn't convinced. His sister's hair is completely dry. Maya is both telling the truth about the shower and lying about not eating the cake. How is it possible? The girl did get in the shower, but she didn't turn the water on. She was just sitting there and eating the cake. (laughs) Someone stole the money Adam kept in his safe. Oh my god. The police questioned three suspects. Julia said she'd gone to bed at 10 p.m. and fallen asleep right away. Parker told the detective he'd been watching TV from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. And Aiden had said he'd been at his friend's playing computer games all night. The police immediately arrested the thief. Who was it? It was Parker. He was very specific about the time. The best player of Julian's volleyball team disappeared right before the game. Julian suspected three players from the rival team. Jackson said, I've just returned from the gym. I was warming up before the competition. Leo had to pick up his wife with her daughter from the hospital. And Ryan claimed he'd fractured his leg, and the team doctor was giving him a massage. Who's behind the player's disappearance? It's Ryan. Getting a massage when your leg's broken? Really? A rich businessman called the police Uh and said a precious vase from his collection had gone missing. When the detective arrived, he found out the businessman had just returned from his overseas trip. While he was away, a security guard was looking after the house. The man was questioned. It happened last night. I was in the same room with the vase reading. Suddenly, the power went out. I heard the doorbell ring and hurried to open the door. But there was no one outside. When I came back, the vase was gone. The detective didn't believe the security guard and arrested him. 
Why? The doorbell can't ring if there's no electricity. Caroline went for a walk to the park. Deep in her thoughts, the girl wasn't really looking where she was going. That's why she didn't notice a pit in the ground and fell into it. When she came around, she found herself in a strange room. There were no windows, no door. In the dim light, the girl saw a table with three apples on it. And was it a note? To get out of this trap, you've got to eat an apple. But only one of them isn't poisoned. Pick carefully. Caroline was terrified. But after examining the apples, she bravely bit into one of them and nothing bad happened. Which apple did she choose? The girl chose the apple with the worm peeking out of it. If this creature can eat the fruit, a human can too. Mary worked as a maid in a rich family. Once, they left for a one-week vacation. The girl stayed alone and looked after the house. When her employers returned, the wife discovered that two of her diamond rings had gone missing. The woman called the police and accused Mary of taking the jewelry. Can you help the girl prove she has nothing to do with the theft? Mary was probably not very attentive while cleaning the house. One of the rings is under the sofa, the other in the bucket. It was the first day of school when the principal's wallet went missing. There were three suspects, the gardener, the math teacher, and the coach. Here's what they said. The gardener was mowing the front yard. The math teacher was checking the surprise test he'd given his students. And the coach was meeting new people who wanted to join the school's soccer team. Who took the wallet? It was the math teacher. Nobody gives surprise tests on the first day of school. Landon's mother is going to visit her relatives in another town. Before leaving, she enters her son's room to say goodbye. Oh my, it's a terrible mess. And the boy's playing games on his phone. The woman takes the gadget away and locks it in her safe. I'll tell you the password only after you send me a photo of your room, tidy and squeaky clean. She's at the railway station when Landon sends her the photo. She's happy at first, before she realizes it's an old one. How did she understand it? The date on the departure board at the station is December 20th, 2020. But it's July 5th, 2019 on the calendar in Landon's room. Logan is a special agent who's trying to catch a notorious villain. After long months of investigation, he finds the criminal's headquarters. But the door is locked, which is not a surprise, really. Logan sees a screen next to the entrance. He touches it, and the display lights up. Mmm, it must be a riddle. Our special agent needs to solve it to get inside. Add one line to make it right. 9.5 equals 10, 10, 10. Logan cracks the puzzle in no time. What's the answer? Nine point five equals ten to ten. The door opens and the man steps into a dark corridor. After walking some time, Logan notices a door. Ah, a code lock again. That's when the man also spots a calendar hanging on the wall. At the bottom, there are several letters M F W. After connecting the dots, the special agent figures out the code. What is it? It's 153. The letters stand for the days of the week, Monday, Friday, and Wednesday. Monday is the first day, Friday the fifth, and Wednesday the third one. The door swings open and Logan sees a room. There's not much inside, just an old mattress, several half-rotten fruits in the corner, a small knife half-hidden under the mattress, 
and a water dispenser with a bottle of water on top of it. The villain must have kept someone here. Anyway, there are four doors leading out of the room. Behind the first one, there's a mother bear with a cub. The second one leads to a lake with hungry crocodiles. Behind the third door, there's a room filled with toxic gas. And the fourth door hides a wall of fire. With his special training, Logan doesn't need much time to choose the door and leave the room. Which one does he pick? The third one. The agent empties the water bottle. Then he uses the knife to cut it in such a way that his head fits in. His scarf helps prevent the toxic air from entering the bottle. He runs into a room. In the corner, Logan sees a staircase. It leads to the basement. Down there, there are three men. Each of them is tied to a chair and claims that one of the other two is the villain. They tell Logan they've been locked in there for at least four days. The special agent looks at the men attentively and soon figures out who the criminal is. Can you do the same? The villain is the man on the left. Four days have passed, but he has no stubble whatsoever. Case solved. Allison is a big boss in an international company. One day, she's hurrying to an important meeting when she notices the documents she needs haven't been printed out. But she's asked at least three of her subordinates to do it. Ian says he's just returned from the supermarket because they've run out of coffee beans. Robert claims he's been terribly busy drafting a new contract. And Alice answers she's been in the kitchen, preparing snacks and making coffee for the meeting. Who's actually forgotten about the task and making up excuses at the last moment? It's Alice. There's no coffee in the office. Then how could she make it? Uh Uh-huh. One Sunday, Tom told his brother Dan that he was going hiking with his friend Chris. The next Saturday, the police found Tom unconscious in the forest. Dan said he had been working all week. As for Chris, he was found wandering along the highway. He explained that he had gotten lost in the forest almost immediately after they had arrived and just found his way home. One of the guys was lying. Who was it? Look at Chris. He's too well-shaven for a man who spent a week in the woods. There are five girls in the room. Ashley is drawing. Olivia is reading. Maria is playing hide-and-seek. And Emma is tidying up. What's Sarah doing? Sarah is playing hide-and-seek with Maria, of course. What number is missing? A small hint, it's not number 4. Number 5 is missing. The subsequent number of 234 is 235. In the small town of Sunshine Valley, three teachers went on a sick leave all on the same day. Jenna says she got into a car accident and broke her leg, so she can't walk. Emma complained she had a very unfortunate workout and injured her neck, so she can't turn her head. And Tina says she fell from a bike and fractured her arm. But one of them is lying. Can you tell who? It's Jenna. If she can't walk, why does she even have a crutch to hold her up? If it's raining at midnight, can you expect that in 72 hours it'll be sunny? Nope, in 72 hours, it's going to be night again. In the room, there are two people, both of them sitting. But if one of them stands up, they won't be able to take the other one's place whatever they do. How is that possible?
The second person is sitting on the first one's lap. A father tells his teenage daughter, You arrived very late at 3 a.m. and made us all worry a lot. I don't want this situation to repeat. His daughter, though, replies that it will never happen again. How can she be so sure? The father was talking about the birth of his daughter. An art expert paid big money at an auction for a painting that he knew didn't cost anything. He was an honest man and didn't have any criminal intentions. Why did he buy this picture? Although the painting costs nothing, its frame was a beautiful and expensive piece of art. A street food vendor has a sign on his stall saying, One hot dog, one and a half dollars. Three hot dogs, five dollars. He knows it's more expensive to buy three, but doesn't change his sign. Why? Each time a customer saw his sign, they would buy one hot dog, then another, and then a third one totaling up to $4.50. Thus, everyone's happy. The customers think they're clever, and the vendor gets his sales up. During a fire, a bank was robbed. The security guard told the police that he wanted to save a bag of money, but he had to crouch to tie his boot just in front of the emergency exit. At that moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came to, the hmm? money was missing. Why was the security guard arrested? Well, all emergency doors open outwards. You find yourself in a photo gallery. After looking at the wall, you realize that one of the pictures doesn't belong to the rest. You see a raccoon, a llama, a football, and a balloon. Can you tell which is the odd one out? It's the llama picture. The other three objects have two double letters in their names, but the llama only has one double. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and say that it's more than half full, but your friend argues that it's less than half full. How to figure out who's right without using any measuring tools or removing water from the barrel? Tilt the barrel so that the water touches the rim. If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the bottom is still covered with water, it's more. Sam and his brother John were always fighting. Their mother couldn't take it anymore and came up with a clever plan to stop them. She told the boys to stand on the same piece of paper in such a way that they didn't touch each other, and it worked. The boys couldn't fight anymore. How did she do it? The woman slipped the paper under a closed door and made Sam stand on one side and John on the other. There is a bridge that is one mile long. It can hold only 5,000 pounds at one time. That's exactly the weight of the truck that's crossing it. The truck reaches the middle of the bridge and stops. Suddenly, a bird lands on the truck. Is the bridge going to collapse? The bridge isn't going to break down, because the truck has already used some gas to get to the middle, and therefore weighs less than 5,000 pounds. A young woman is sitting near the window. At first, she's deep in thought. Then, she suddenly decides to throw something out of the window. A couple minutes later, she drops on the floor unconscious. She's perfectly healthy and isn't prone to sudden faints. There was no one outside to have hit her either. So, what happened? She was knocked out by the very same thing she'd thrown out the window. It was a boomerang that came back and hit her on the head. Well, that was a dumb thing to do. 
Two men are in a room facing each other. One of the men is a psychic and can see into the future. He predicts that in 10 minutes, the other man will be hit on the back of his head. Of course, shocked and paranoid, the other man can't stop staring at the clock on the wall. And exactly 10 minutes later, he's lying face down on the floor. How could it happen? After 10 minutes, the man turned around to see if there was anyone behind him. At exactly that moment, the psychic hit him on the back of his skull. Well, I'm starting to think he wasn't a psychic after all. You walk up to the edge of a forest, when suddenly you see a man in swimming trunks, goggles, and a snorkel going out of the thicket and falling on the ground as if exhausted. But you know the nearest body of water is several miles away. How did the weird man end up in the forest? There was a huge forest fire, and the plane that was extinguishing it had to scoop up water from the lake several miles away. Doing it, it accidentally captured the man snorkeling in the lake. He was dropped down together with the water and miraculously survived. Upon receiving an anonymous tip, The police rushed to a house where a suspect was said to be. They have no physical description, but they do know his name is John. When the cops reach the place, they see four people sitting at a table. A carpenter, a firefighter, a truck driver, and a mechanic. None of which have name tags on their uniforms. Without a moment's hesitation, they arrest the firefighter. So how did they know that's their guy? The firefighter was the only man in the room. All the others at the table were women and couldn't be named John. A man and his wife are driving down a highway when they run out of gas. So the husband decides to walk to the nearest gas station, which is about an hour's walk away. Before he heads off, he tells his spouse to stay in the car and lock all the doors and windows. The wife, bored and wanting to entertain herself, turns on the radio only to hear some shocking news. A notorious criminal has escaped from prison and was last seen on that very highway where the car is sitting. The reporter on the news gives a very detailed description of the escapee. The wife gets so scared that she quickly turns off the radio. She double-checks all the locks, but when she looks up, she sees the escapee just a few feet away from the car. When the man returns, he finds the car still all locked up, but his wife is nowhere to be seen. How is it possible? The answer is simple. The couple had been driving a convertible with the top down, and the woman wasn't, dare we say, terribly bright. An adventurer found a treasure chest in a cave that was guarded by a pirate. He had three keys, gold, silver, and black. But only one of them could open the chest. The pirate would give the adventurer only one chance to reach the treasure. If he chose the right key, he could take the chest. If he chose incorrectly, the pirate would attack him. The only clue was this cipher. Which is the right key? The cipher is an anagram. Shuffle the letters a bit and you'll get the golden key. The adventurer went away unscathed, and the pirate was left frustrated and treasureless. 